those old Jesus when he died on the cross. Power will die and power will love. Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loved on the cross. Welcome again to Jesus This Excellence Broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales and I just pray the Lord's been ministering to you this week on the duty of man. And I pray all oh, yesterday, that was that was just rich of uh, 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 in Proverbs chapter two, one through five, but you read those eight steps uh, of of how the fear of the Lord is established in your life. Uh, here we, we start in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the whole matter or hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the duty of man. And really, when you when you fear God, you reverence God, you respect God, you really have to respect and honor and reverence and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And keep. Jesus commands. And so I, I want to begin to, to get because what, what happens a lot of times in keeping his commandments, we we we've been taught, really to be honest, which we've just been taught wrong. And 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 I, I don't know, you know, why people have trouble receiving this. I guess that maybe they done taught something so long and and it just it just takes a look a little longer to, to see it. But uh, we go to Matthew 22, verse 35. One of the lawyers came to Jesus. Listen carefully to this now. And they asked the Lord Jesus, uh, when the Pharisees heard, had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they gathered together. The verse 35 in Matthew 22. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, uh, master, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the great? See, now, now, now listen. See, when Jesus give us a commandment, he's not answering no question for nobody. That, that commandment has to come from God. It's in John 15, verse 12, John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. John 15 verse 12 said, this is my commandment that you love one another as I love you. And so uh, this is not Jesus' commandments. But these are, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? In the law. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all it in the law. It's in the law. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy man. This is the first and great commandment. Now, let me tell you something now that Jesus showed me when I was in the service about about uh, uh, nine years ago. It's eight, nine years ago, Jesus showed me this. I was sitting in the service, and Jesus just started talking to me in that service. And here's what Jesus told me. He said, no way in the letters do, is this repeated. Nowhere. Nowhere in the letters is it repeated that this is a commandment from the Lord that you and I supposed to keep to love God with our heart, soul, and mind and strength. And it, ain't in, it ain't in Acts. It ain't in Romans. And it ain't in Jude. And no, no way in between. And so Jesus is answering a question to the lawyer. Which is the first and great commandment. This is the first and great commandment. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now listen to verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the promise. Now. You, you, you have to, if you're going to keep Jesus' commandments, you have to get the revelation that he has to bring the love to you first. We, we are not, in, in 1 John 4.10, he, 
Herein is love. Well, let me just quote you nine. Uh, God is love. And, and Jesus uh, uh, was manifested. He manifested this love to us. Um, and, and we can't make it up first. Till the Lord do something for us. That's why people don't walk really walk in it. They walk in the candy sometimes, nice and sometimes. But see, that stuff ain't the love of God. If when something go wrong, that falls to the ground. So that's not God's love. God's love never fails in Jesus. And that love's in us. So in this was manifested the love, first John 4 now, manifested the love of God toward us. It come God's love toward us. Where? When God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. We might live through Jesus, allowing Jesus to give us. And so, verse 10 in 1 John 4, herein is love or the love that God is. The love that manifested when God sent his only begotten son into the world. Here is that love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Now here's the verse in verse 10. Here in his love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the perpetuation for our sins. If God don't be the example in Jesus of what love is, then we're just doing the best we can. That's why. The law was love God with your heart, soul, mind, strength, just, you know. But in Jesus, saints, you, you never have no strength. In Jesus, it's be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You never get to give Jesus nothing. You, you don't get to bring nothing to Jesus. Nothing. You don't bring no peace, no love, no joy. He brings it all to you. And then when you live out of what he brings to you, you will love him. You will love God. You will love your brethren. You will love the, his word. You will love his spirit. You will love his presence. Listen, you you can't love his presence and he ain't never brought it to you. You can't love like God and he ain't brought it to you. And then verse, verse 12, beloved, if God so loved us, look what's first. We ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. His love must be perfected in us before we can produce loving him. Jesus has to show us how to do it. You don't know people done tried. You done failed. No man, look at, read 1 John 4, 12 with me. No man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us, when we receive his love and go live that to us. God's love ain't perfected in us when we go try to love people. We ain't finna perfect nothing without him. Now, 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 look, look now. His love is perfected in us. Now, now hold on to that as we keep reading. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us. Because he has given us of his spirit, which is the love of God. This is how we know that we dwell in him and he dwells in us. Because he gave us his love. This is how we both identify that the Lord is with us. Because he done gave us something. We have seen and do testify that the Father, look, look at We have seen... And we, as Christians, should be testifying that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the one sent from God, who spoke all truth about God, see, God dwelleth in him and he in God. If you always saying what came from Jesus' lips 
is the absolute truth from God. Well, I don't know about all that. Oh, no, you don't believe Jesus, the Son of God. Now, verse 16. This is 16 now, in First John 4. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. We have known. We, 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 we ain't known and believed the love we have for God. We have known and believed. See, you, you can't believe in the love you have for God. You have to believe in the love God has for you. And then that produces when you live in that. You are producing loving him by his own love, his own nature. What well, God wants you to love in him with your ugliness for? Your flesh can't love God. It don't even have the ability of God in it to love God. You have to love God out of your spirit where you've been born again. We have known and believed the love that God have to us. Now, now watch that because a lot of people have misinterpreted these scriptures. God is love. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love, what God is, dwelleth in God and God in him. So when, when we're dwelling in God, it's because God's love is dwelling in us. You, you can't dwell in God and God don't do something for you. And so then you go to verse 17. Now, verse 17, very controversial verse. Herein is our love made perfect. Now, the King James, I, I got a Bible that's got a margin in it. And in my margin, I look over in verse 17. And the King James twisted this verse. And the King James said, herein is our love made perfect. But when you look over in the margin where the Greek is, it says Greek. It's herein is his love with us made perfect. God's love is made perfect in us. When we cooperate and live in his love and keep Jesus' commandments every day. Herein is his love with us. Look it up in the Greek. Herein is his love with us. May his love with me is made perfect so that I may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Why? Because we have his love. And when you are born of his love and born when the love of God was shared abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, then the, the Bible said, as he is, so are we. So we got the same nature, same character that he has, that he is. There is no fear. Now, a lot of times people go back. There's no fear when you love God. No, no, no. You can't. You're taking this out of context. You, you read it. He's talking about God with us, God loving us in Jesus. There is no fear when God loves you. Be, but, but perfect love, God's love with us, cast this out us, expecting danger. When, when God loves you, when you live in a picture that God loved you on the cross and took your sins away, you are not going around living in you are afraid at, that you're going to get judged because God is not going to judge you. When you live in his love, you will repent. You will turn from anything that you know God don't want you to do, and you will not be judged. Your judgment will fall on Jesus Christ, and Jesus pays the penalty for what you and I did wrong. Thank God he redeems us from the curse. Thank God we ain't got to worry about being judged no more. We ain't got to be afraid of none of that because we are living in the blood of Jesus. We are cooperating with Jesus. We are fellowshipping with our brothers and sisters. We are walking in the light as Jesus is in the light. We're having fellowship with one another and the blood of his son Jesus cleanses us from all sin.
Amen. Then let me read you this in, in the New Living Translation. Such love that God has for us has no fear. The love that God brings to us has no fear. Perfect love expels all fear. When, when God manifests his love, it expels anything that will try to tell you God ain't going to do what he said in Jesus. See, it expels that. If we are afraid, here it is, here it is. It is for fear of judgment. And this shows that his love, his love has not been perfected in us. Verse 19. We love each other as a result of his, his loving us first. Now that's the truth. See, when you keep his commandments, let, let, me, let me help you all. In, in, in the Old Testament, it was something that you had you and had to keep as a Jew. But in Christ Jesus, it's something you have to believe and receive first. Before you can do any keeping. Amen. And so go back to, to chapter 3. Um, verse um, 22. No, I'm sorry. Let me read verse 14 first. We know that we pass from death unto life because we love the brother. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And so, you know, what, what the Lord's telling us is, if you don't let me love you first, you're going to abide in death if you're not going to live my love toward others. This is the most, beside getting a reverence for God, a fearing and respecting the Lord Jesus, who God sent, and keeping Jesus' commandments. The first commandment we're getting ready to, to, to read is verse 23. This is his commandment, that we believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Look it up. And love one another as he gave his commandment. Now, let, let, me, let me tell y'all some things. And I'm not, I'm not sharing this to hurt nobody. You can't teach love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor yourself, and teach believe on the name. They are totally opposite each other. One is you doing something to get God to bless you. The other is God have already blessed you in Christ, and you're going to live in that love, receive that love, and go live that love toward others. You can't preach both of them. Because one, you're making people live in their strength. The other is living in who God is in Christ. And I'm, I'm making this plain as I know. Now let's go back up to John. 1 John 3. Verse 15. Whoever hateth his brother. The word hate there in the Greek in one translation I study, it's a persecuting spirit, a active ill will with your words or conduct. So see, you can be hating and, and smiling at people. You can be hating and, 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 and work for somebody at work. And you hate what they did. You hate them. You just have a persecuting spirit against them. An active ill will with your words of conduct. You can hate people in your home. You can hate people anywhere. Restaurant, grocery stores. Uh, but whoever hateth his brother, the Bible says, is a murderer. And you know that no murder have eternal life or bad in him. Now, you know, on a lot of talk shows, they just hate all the time. They, they, they think it's okay to hate. But they don't walk with the Lord. They might believe in Jesus uh, and, and, and try to live in, in, in some morals of the Ten Commandments, but they don't, they don't walk in Jesus' love. Because they'd have to cut out a lot of stuff. I, I had a, I seen on this one program, man said he was a Christian. Christian said it. 
And then he took, uh, uh, and, and they were talking about a, a football player named Michael Vick who <clears throat> recently got out of prison and been just doing well and serving the Lord. God's forgave him and he's, he's walking with him. And, and he had the nerve to say, well, I don't forgive him. What he did was too bad. What, what about what you done did? And I'm telling you, man, they confused. I don't know where they go to church every day. They need to burn them churches. Man, something need to come and knock them churches down. If they teaching them that you can't receive forgiveness from Jesus and you pose a whole sum against them. Man, there's something wrong. For people to 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 be on TV confessing they're Christian and they don't even show that they love people. Like Jesus loved us on the cross. I don't know where they get them kind of churches at. Where them preachers come from? And 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 um, it's, it's insane. It is so against Jesus for him to say he's like Christ, Christian like Christ. And he said he wasn't going to forgive him. Whew. They don't even know the Lord. Look at verse 16. I'm telling y'all, I'm talking about, I'm talking about when I talk about burning, I'm talking about God. Man, God just don't bless stuff like that. Saints. Jesus talked about this in Revelation, taking the candlestick from churches because they don't do what Jesus tell them to do. They don't preach what Jesus tell them to preach. They don't listen. They don't have Jesus' spirit in them churches. And when you don't have Jesus' spirit, you can't even learn about the love of Christ that loved you on the cross and took all your sins away. And Jesus has called you to go live that too. No, I don't want their churches burned up. But I'm telling you, I want that mess that they teaching burned up. Just garbage. I mean, it just, it just, you know, it bothers the Lord. And you see it bothering me because it bothers him. Verse 16, 1 John 3. Now listen to this, listen to this. Hereby perceive we the love of God. All right, all right, now see, see. You can't perceive the love of God and you trying to love God with your heart, soul, and mind and strength. You can't perceive the love of God when you loving your neighbor as yourself. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. That's the only way you can perceive love. The love of that God himself is, is when you look at Jesus laying his life down for us. And we are to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's goods, see if his brother have need and shed up his bowels of compassion for him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. If, you're, if your heart's not noting against you, the word condemn means to note against you, to find fault. If your heart's not finding fault with you, then you can have confidence toward, toward God loving you. If your heart condemns you and notes against you that you're doing something wrong, then you need to know that God is greater than your fault and that his love knows everything how to bring you out of that. Verse 20, 22, and whatever we ask, we receive of him. Why, Pascal? Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing his sight. Pascal, what do we keep? Verse 23, and this is Jesus' commandment. This is it. That you believe 
on the name of the Son, His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. And He that keep them, no, not need to do it, not want to do it, but He that is keeping His commandments with action dwelleth He. His commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. So you're, you're not even dwelling in him and he in you when you're not believing on the Son and you're not living what you believe in Jesus. I'm going to pick this back up tomorrow. Don't forget tomorrow I'm going to pray with you all. On Fridays I always pray with you. I want to make available to you this six CD series, The Duty of Man. And, and uh, for a love gift of thirty dollars or more, make your checks and money orders to Jesus. It's at the Ministries Post Office Box two nine two one one two Nashville Tennessee three seven two two nine. And Saints, order these. I'll get them right out to you. These will will teach people how to walk in the light. It's our duty as children of God is to fear. Who God sent, the Lord Jesus, respect and reverence the Son Jesus, and to to keep His commandments, to live His love toward others every day. So order them today. Also, you can go on our webpage, RobertScaleMinistry.org. You order these with your credit card, Amen. And if you if you order this, uh, I'll 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 I'll, uh, I'll send you a free copy of my book, God's Grace Explained. If you order these CDs, make sure you ask for them. And we will absolutely be glad to send you a free copy of Grace Explained. And I know that book will be a blessing to you too. Also, I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church. Amen. Saints, uh, if you don't have a good church home, you're not, you're frustrated, not being tall, sitting there bound. You ain't going to stay like that, Jesus as a church. And uh, because I teach you how to walk. And live in Jesus victory every day of your life and so I invite you all to come I know you'll be tremendously blessed go to our webpage you can get directions we're in Watertown Tennessee our service time 9 o'clock Sunday school 10 o'clock regular service and also Thursdays at 7 p.m. well I want to thank my partners and friends thank you for praying and, and helping me financially uh, to get the gospel out saints I know God is speaking to many of you I thank you for uh, obeying him and doing what God tell you to do. I know that the Lord you'll have a great reward in heaven and one here on earth. So thank you so much. You can go to our webpage, robertscaleministries.org You can make donations with your credit card. Thank you. Let us know how much the broadcast has been a blessing to you. That really encourages me and blesses me. Well, my prayer for you is you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. And Jesus has been, I'm Pastor Robert Skip. Remember now, as he loved you, go live that love. Have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.